Sorry. Welcome to Noon Hour Slides from the Moose Jaw Museum and Art Gallery. We're located on Treaty 4 territory, the traditional lands of the Blackfoot, Cree, Ojibwe, Soto, Dakota, Nakota, Lakota, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. We pay our respects to First Nations and Métis ancestors and reaffirm our relationship with one another. We gratefully acknowledge funding from the City of Moose Jaw, Sask Arts, Sask Culture, Saskatchewan Lotteries, Canada Council for the Arts, Canadian Heritage, and the Government of Canada. I'm Vincent Hotelling, the Administrative Assistant here, and I'm here to welcome you to today's presentation. Elaine Stutt is here to talk to us about Mexico. Welcome. Okay, well, this slideshow is entirely on uh, Mexico City, and Mexico City is called Ciudad Mexico, which is CDMX. CDMX is the, you see it all over the place, it's the character code for Mexico City. And unfortunately, at the beginning of this show, uh, you've some of you have seen before. Because what I did was I had a previous show where I um, showed a little bit of Mexico City, but then I ended up going to Oaxaca and I really slighted Mexico City. So what I'm going to do is a little bit, the first part you would have seen before, but the rest you, you haven't. Anyway, so we arrived in Mexico City very early. We were able to drop our luggage at the hotel and then walked around. And where we were was in the uh, older part of the city near the uh, Alameda, which is a big old park venerable and this is the uh the their kind of combination opera house um a um, little bit of museum bozar uh both bozar and in, in interior is um deco okay i've got a map for you uh we're on the upper right the Alame alameda central and uh like our hotel was right beside it uh oh, i click something sorry um and uh, later, if you go down this central um, Paseo Revolution, I guess, you get down to this huge uh, park, Chapa, Chapultepec. We were there, and we also went down to the Condesa Roma era area later. Um, so this first day, we walked around, and what you see fairly close is the um, Mexico City Metropolitan Cathedral, and the plaque above. Um, the door or some door is the classic representation of Mexico City. Mexico was founded, this is an Aztec myth, I believe, that, that you will found a city where you see an eagle eating a snake. And where he found an eagle eating a snake was on top of a cactus, which was on an island in the middle of a lake. So Mexico City is built on a former lake bed, which is why they have a lot of soil problems. And there's the, the big cathedral and the cathedrals on the central plaza and the central plaza of a town is called, called as Ocalo. So we're still just walking around. And we were there in uh, November, cool. And, and there was some interesting public art. This was a sort of the, the form of a chair with a, a funny dog head. And this is in the Alameda Central, the big central, and they have a lot of fountains which at one point I found the names for several. And this is one of their local squirrels. You can see it has chestnut on the neck, nape of the neck and the tail. Just walking along. A lot of trees, very beautiful. Um, and being a metropolitan city, and somewhere I have the stats for this, but I can't read them. Mexico City, along with New York, Tokyo, and, and uh, Cairo, have been the biggest city in the world. So it's a very big city. We saw a teensy, teensy, teensy bit of it. But anyway, one thing you can find it is big metropolitan cities is restaurants from many, many cultures. So this is an Alsatian restaurant. And here's a big monument down the street. And you notice on the, on the um, right, a lot of stalls are being set up because there's a lot of stall sales and little stalls anyway, but they were setting a bunch up for Christmas, I think. And this is where we're going up to that monument. It's the monument to the revolution. Yeah, this part of the slideshow, we have titles, but uh, not later. And it was a, you know, a sort of deco, maybe a little, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I think fascist was the, the style they call it, but I, I, that would make implications that aren't necessarily 
Anyway, it's a big, and it, we, there is an elevator. You could go up to a viewing tower. We didn't. And it's a beautiful little fountain that people were really enjoying. The dogs were enjoying. It was just a lovely square. And there's a lot of little plazas, and they tend to be on that. Can you hear me all right, incidentally? Anyway, I'm, I'm assuming you can. Uh, a lovely little plaza. A lot of the plazas are on the French, French um, mode, is it? There's not grass to sit in. There's um, uh, hedges and, and benches, and uh, it's very pretty, but it, not a lot of grass. And there's a topiary dog or a topiary something. And then at night, we look back on the, uh, the monument on the uh, Alameda and the uh, opera house. You see, I was being very clever today. I was going to put my notes up in a second computer, but I managed to get the, and it didn't take the notes. So I don't know how I screwed that up. Anyway, here's me in a restaurant. It's the Cerveceria de Barrio, and that is a chain. We didn't know that, but it turned out a lot of the restaurants we went to were chains, but they were very nice chains. Uh, we went to Tox, Vips, Sanborns, uh, Tito's, and all quite nice, but they were indeed chains. And they had some nice desserts. And this is back in the Alameda. And I'm not sure which day of the week or certain things happened, but you can see here is a band practicing and there were bands of all types and sorts. And here's the, um, one of the fountains. And they had some uh, policemen uh, staffing there, but in, in, you know, sort of fancy dress. And people really enjoyed the square. They were out, out, you know, a lot. And this part of the town, we saw, at least at this time of year, we saw very few tourists. Uh, whereas we saw more in uh, Oaxaca and the other part of um, Mexico City we were in. And there's Rod standing by a big tree. Some of the flowers. And one of the reasons the square was so nice, they really had people out working and, and cleaning. So I have a beautiful big tree because this, this is one of the oldest public squares in North America. And in my notes, I could tell you the X date, but I can't find my notes. But it's been there for quite a while, and it's at least right now, it's quite well cared for. And they do all sorts of things. Here's dance lessons or a, a dance party. One of the ones we were watching was definitely a, a, a lesson, and guy was telling them what to do. And there's a school marching band of some sort. The Lynx and the Eagles from Veracruz. They must have been in town for some of it. And Rod took these pictures. And here they're, they're skating around little cones here. And this is another day. And the big thing they, one of the things that's native to Mexico is the, um, uh, can I remember? You all know what these are, naturally, I can't remember the name, but in, in Spanish, they're called either no, Noches Buenas or Buenas Noches, which means kind of holy night, and they're around at Christmas. And they were all over. Uh, and here's Rod at a street restaurant, you know, very pleasant. There was a, in that part of downtown, there's a lot of pedestrian streets closed off, a lot, lot of, um, and this was uh, an artwork and it was, um, there's a, a lot between the, um, we've all heard of the drug wars in Mexico and um, difficulties with the police, but there get, people have been, you know, in quotes, disappeared. They're, they've been killed, presumably, but nobody ever finds their bodies. So this was a, it shows identity cards of some of the people who were disappeared. And you can see that, you know, some of the streets provide nice shade when it's hot. It wasn't hot when we were there. We were there late. Although we only, there was only about one day where we really wanted our coats. This is uh, what we found is some of the true in the older buildings in that part of Mexico City is that there used to be an open courtyard. And what they've now done is lot, they've put a, um, a roof over the courtyard. So you have a, an interior space, but this was an old courtyard. I'm not sure what the building was, but it was rented out for a fairly high-end craft show. A uh, lot of nice art, some of it uh, huge. Um, 
but very interesting. And it came from all areas of Mexico. And that's the front of the building, which is a really ornate, ornate building. Uh, and pretty close to it was a um, church. We went into a lot of churches. I'm not showing you that many, but this one was um, St. Francis. And it actually had a slightly plainer interior than some, but it was a very pleasant little church. And beside it, there was a garden and the garden had been turned into a sculpture garden. That is Princesa, I know, because I wrote that down last night. The next one is Mujer Sentado, like seated woman. And this is the, uh, the back door of the, the church, which backs onto the sculpture garden. Now, what we did is we took a side trip. We got uh, learned in the guidebooks that it, uh, it's better to take a guide to get out there. So we, we, our friend here told us, oh, my, uh, my aunt's friend knows a guide. So we went out with them, which is good because it, you don't know where to go and how to travel and whatever. It was quite pleasant. Anyway, we we're looking at Teotihuacan and Teotihuacan is a very old ruin. It's well pre-Aztecs. The Aztecs and the other people were as mystified about this place as we are. Uh, but what, you, what you're looking at from the Temple of the Plume Serpus is nearest is the Temple of the Sun and then the Temple of the Moon in the background, which is a little smaller. And up on the, the hill is, it, they think that in some ways they made the pyramids to, to match the hill on the background. But here's a school group and the, is a viewing platform. And what we're looking at is the Temple of the Plume Serpent. And uh, you could see there's, and all of these, there's some degree of um, maintenance or rebuilding. And you can see here, you can see the, um, the heads of the two gods. I think one maybe Quetzal something or other, and the other is Tlaloc. But they're not sure because they're putting like Aztec names on these gods when these were pre-Aztec. So nobody, they keep guessing about who the people who lived in Teotihuacan were, who they were related to, and who their gods were related to. But anyway, that's the plume serpent. And if you look back at leading to the um, left, you can see the serpent body. And that's reputed to be a water god. And then they took us back. One of the things is, is there's several parking lots and they said, no, nah, too much to walk from one to the other. Let's take the car. So we took the car back up. Now we're, if you're looking, I guess, is it to the south? Uh, the plume serpent is down there and we're gonna go now to the temple of the sun. Now in hot weather, it's definitely quite strenuous to go up to the top. For us, not so strenuous because it wasn't hot. The guide said, no, we'll wait for you. No problem. And I went up most of the way. I went up all the way. Rod went up most of the way. And it's not hard to climb unless the weather's hot, then it's very strenuous. And the steps are big. If you can't handle big steps, it's a problem. And the, the, the pyramid is the something like third largest pyramid in the world. But see, the pyramid in Giza is a lot taller. And they don't entirely know what it looked like because it's been resurfaced and they're guessing about exactly what it looks like. Like somebody says, no, there should have been a, like this, like that. But it, you know, it's pretty, it is a pure big pyramid. And there you're looking at the Temple of the Moon. And here's going down and they, they have a little a rail that you could hold on to, but I found it was actually easier to lean down and hold the stairs, the, you know, to the rock. And there's looking back up. And they had signs, you are here, usted, usted esta aquí. So it tells you how long it takes to go somewhere, very nice. And here we're looking up at the Temple of the Moon. And what it is, it's a, it's a smaller pyramid than the other. And in front, at different times, they built different things on top. So this is a, a where you see the people climbing is actually a platform in front of the other one. And here we are posing. And there's our guide showing us stuff. She was very, very good, animated, gives a lot of information. And this is, they call the Avenue of the Dead, but like, uh, that's what the Aztecs call it. We don't know what they call it. They probably called it like Main Street. And this was actually bigger steps and steeper than the other one. This was actually harder to go down. And this is um, 
uh, the temple of that one they 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 actually excavated these quite recently, like in the sixties, and somebody called it the, dem, the temple of the plumed butterfly. They figured no, that is now not an accurate name, but it still goes by the name. So the Quetzalcoatl, and they have some nice uh, signage there, not in English, but this is a uh, an inner courtyard of this uh, temple that was, uh, and you can see here's a. They figured it's an owl, an owl with a headdress. And you can see that it used to have, the, the eye has some onyx, some stone in it. And they have some murals, a lot of murals. This is a, a jaguar blowing a horn. And there's, the symbolism with their stuff is so complicated. It, and anyway, here is actually the museum and the museum has a beautiful view of the Pyramid of the Sun and a whole map of the area. And that was one where the guides helped drove us all the way around to get to the, because you could have gone to it another way, but this way, and there was a nice botanical garden there as well. And this was an interesting thing in one of the museums. This is an interpretation of a wall mural. And artistically, it's interesting because you have, in art, you have degrees of separation and whatnot. And there they're showing how the, the artist made the animals leaping up and kind of interacting over the, uh, the areas. So I thought that was a really nice interpretive piece. Anyway, there's a lot of pottery, and this is the site museum, and this shows how they, a cast mold and a jaguar. And the plume serpent, where they took us to a, a wonderful buffet, and in the, they had built their own plume serpent. Okay, going back, now that was Teotihuacan, which was well pre-Aztec. It was built around, like, ending in about 200 AD. I'm not, and this is Tenochtitlan, which is the original Mexico City, which was built where there was an eagle eating a snake on a cactus in the middle of an island. So this is the original Aztec city. Um, and you can see in the background mountains, Mexico City, I believe is about 8,000 feet in elevation, like which is higher than say Santa Fe and definitely higher than, uh, than Denver. And in the background, the, the volcanoes are higher than anything in the Canadian, lower Canadian Rockies anyway. So, uh, the um, you have to get up to the Yukon to get anything higher, but these are 18,000 foot tall volcanoes, volcanoes, and there you can see them in a painting from like 1905, and this is from the hill of Guadalupe. So on the way back, the guide took us to the 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 uh, pilgrimage church of Guadalupe is near where Guadalupe is a manifestation of the Virgin Mary, but she spoke Noah, she spoke the native language and, and appeared to a native. So those are the volcanoes in the background. And here is the original uh, pilgrimage church. And we were like a few days before the feast of um, Guadalupe and a uh, big deal, like they had it on TV and we saw a lot of um, pilgrimage walking on and they'd, the pilgrims would have like a shrine on their back. Anyway, that's the new, uh, the new uh, church. And this is one of the relics, which is a, a painting. And there's our guides, happy. And this is a shrine to Guadalupe, which you'd see all over the place. Anyway, we went to Oaxaca, which I'm not showing you now, but what they did have there is a beautiful bus station. I used to go to Regina by bus all the time, but I can't because the government and all its wisdom got rid of the bus. Mexico City has a beautiful bus station, beautiful. And you can see all their terminals and things, you know, they know what transportation is. Okay, when we got back from Oaxaca, we had a nasty surprise. I guess it's bookings.com, I don't know, but if you ever use one of these booking season services, you have to look at the com com comments, and you have to look at the comments not three months be before when you book it, you have to look at it right away. Turned out this was a pop-up, not a hotel, but a pop-up. We knocked, there was nobody there, and it was obviously not the hotel we were looking, but we ended up having to pay one night's stay for bookings.com and find a new hotel, which was fine. We just paid more than when we wanted. But be careful with any of these booking services. Make sure you um, check like right before you leave to make sure, because we found in the thing, yeah, it was some people were running a pop-up in this hotel, old hotel, and saying it was a, you know, anyway, this, we ended up paying more than we liked, but this was the view from our, I don't know, it was like a brand name expensive hotel, I don't know, Radisson Hilton something. 
anyway, where we are now is uh, down, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but I'm running my cursor around sort of the middle left and that Hamburgo is roughly where we were staying. And where we're gonna go next is to the Chapultepec Park. Okay. And uh, to get there, we have to cross the freeway and there's actually the more decorative entrance is up above, but we took the lower one. And Rob and I are both from cities, so this is kind of exciting to us. Oh, big city, look, there's a freeway. Whereas, I don't know, I don't know if you would have the same thrill of looking at three ways that we might. And here we're entering the Chapultepec Park and a squirrel. And a um, lot of um, hawkers, a lot of carts selling wares, food, candy, some giftware. And um, these are grackles, the great tailed grackles. And uh, I looked this up just last night. In uh, Spanish, they're called zanate. And they're connected with one uh, creation myth. I'm not sure which, which uh, culture, but the Zanate got its seven songs from the uh, a wise old turtle, the time of creation. And its seven songs are the seven passions of mankind. And so that's a Zanate, similar to our common grackle, but a little bigger. This is a uh, fountain, huge fountain dedicated to a guy I looked up last night, but can't figure it. It's uh, Neza de Coyotl, which means hungry coyote. It was a, I don't think it was Aztec Tococo culture, something like that. But it's a huge, long, the plaques on the fountain are stories of his life. And we have another Zanate. Beautiful birds. Anyway, that's a picture of him. And more grackles. There's a Chapel Tepic is a nice park. In the background, there were some more formal uh, eating places. We went to one of those. Formal in terms of that they actually had, uh, well, never mind. Anyway, just beautiful park with all the waterways. And they have a big central um, lake, the bird. And we saw, oh, some rental boats. We hadn't done that in years. So we went and got a rental boat. But first we saw another, an, big old egret. And so we paddled around and we saw egrets fishing. And that one, see, it got a little fish in its bill. And you could, it was quite fun and you could see more birds from the little boats. And if you look up their bridge there, you could see it, the, the green colored thing is CDMX, Ciudad Mexico. And so somebody's Later, we see somebody's posing by the sign. A lot of people were posing by the signs. We also went to the botanical garden. And if you look at the tree on the immediate right, you'll see it's all spiky. And that this is a tree that um, the Mayas, you can read it, believe that the Siba tree stood at the center of the earth, connecting the terrestrial world and the spirit world with the long, thick vines hanging from the, the canopy. So we saw these uh, in Oaxaca as well. Very nice little botanical garden, big tree. Chapel Tepic, and I forget which story or myth this is connected with, but Chapel Tepic is the grasshopper or a grasshopper. So they had the image around everywhere. And so the uh, one of the um, these little carts, and the carts are actually rented out for the various uh, people hawking their wares. And you can see it says Bosque de Chapel Tepic, like the woods or park of Chapel Tepic. And this was uh, standing near the entrance is a um, the altar to the revolution. And it's uh, six cadets who were killed in the Mexican-American War where the US took uh, California, Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas away from Mexico. So it's a monument to the people who defended uh, Mexico. And this is leaving the park and this is a, a, a big bridge across the freeway. But at the end, you see the big buildings. Rod was fascinating by them because one of them had a continuous light show at night, which we saw a few times, but that's the BBVA building. So I think I'll show it lit up later. And you see it's getting dark and there's the freeway. Now this is the next day and we're looking at the Paseo de Reforma and they have some huge public fountains. I think one of them was de dedicated to um, 
Columbus. That's been Columbus statue is gone, but this one is uh, supposed to be Diana the Huntress. And uh, along the streets, there were many um, pop-ups and things. There were actually a lot of manger scenes, but I don't have one of those. But this is, uh, we told you about, saw that Guadalupe, the, the, the appearance of Mary. And they had um, a little, uh, this one is beaded, but they're all credited. I wrote the names down if I could see my slide notes. But, and this is by the something Bavardia Floral Studio. Now, this day, we're going up to see the Anthropology Museum, which is huge. Um, my sister was older than I was, and she was crazy about anthropology. So from a young age, like nine, I don't know where my sister got the books, but some wonderful anthropology books. So from when a very early age, I heard all about the Mexican cultures, the Maya and the Olmec and the Toltec. So it was, it was just really fascinating seeing all this. And this... Um, this is the museum. This is the inner courtyard of the museum, and it's fascinating, um, this waterfall. And it was done by three architects, among them Rodriguez, in the 60s. So it's a sort of modern, brutalist, but beautiful, very beautiful building, especially this waterfall, which I took several pictures, kept coming back. And you can see it has uh, mythic symbols all over it, taken from various cultures. And it also has a pond in it. So this is again the central courtyard. Now, the museum on the upper part of the, there was two stories on the upper part, oh, actually three. They had a series of uh, Mexican cultures, which I, th I think I'll show you next. Uh, and they also had a little uh, small snack shop restaurant and this was a very pretty seating area. And here they had a, replica of Teotihuacan, the, the Temple of the Plumed Ser Serpent. Also outside, they had an actual little model of Teotihuacan. Anyway, so this is the Plumed, plumed Serpent. I mean, but you could see that they had colors originally. And this was this fascinating model of uh, old time Mexico City, Teotihuacan. But you can see they're all selling and they're selling uh, cactus uh, products and one looked like cacao. And if you look down, which I don't think you can see, but that looks like they're selling little armadillos and birds and things. So, you know, all sorts of food. And it's a market and they have markets today, but they've been having commerce for many years. Anyway, this is a map of the various culture of Mexico and they had a, like a room for many of them. And then one, in one way they were very good, but there weren't many English signs and they tended to copy the uh, repeat a lot, but we certainly enjoyed them. This shows like a, uh, from a more tropical place. It's a, like a, some sort of straw hut with the uh, storage, uh, ceramic storage jars. This museum is huge. It's beautiful. You could just, you could go there for days and we went for two days. It was just too much to see in one day. You see the baskets and storage. And this is one uh, showing the kind of, uh, you know, the church architecture that the Spanish brought with them. And another picture of the, the this was one of their outdoor replicas. And I don't have my notes. The other thing was fascinating was this is the Mixta or Mixtec uh, codices. Uh, codices are, it's their writing, um, which I, and you could see it was a comb, uh, I hate this when you, I have it on my notes, but I can't see my notes. Uh, so I'm not going to try, but it's a very common, it's like hieroglyphics, the com combination of hieroglyphics and syllabics, and uh, they were, still being used when the uh, Spanish took over the Aztecs and whatnot, but they were so useful because a lot of them indicated land titles and um, uh, genealogy that th they were given power in Spanish court. But on the other hand, they stole a lot of them. Like a lot of them are now in museums in, in uh, Europe because they, they just took them so that the people didn't have their, their uh, books. And the red line is a like a cut between a paragraph. 
and this is a mixed uh, ceramic vase, but the, the decoration on it is sim similar to some of the things that shows in the codices. And this I think is Tlaloc, who was a water god. And you could see the sort of fangs, that's water rushing from his mouth. And this is uh, from Tula. And the, um, they have all the, uh, the rooms sorted by theme. And this is a Mayan glyph carved. And a glyph again was, a, they said one of the Mesoamerica's, the Mayan glyphs, most sophisticated writing system. And we find them a lot carved on things. And this is a, a warrior's uh, stele, but on the top and bottom, you can see some of the um, Mayan glyphs. And this is a goddess of, I forget again, I wrote this down, but she, the way she plays, the placement of the hands and the braided uh, uh, crown are typical of her. And these are um, sort of ceramic animals and they're fantastic animals because you know the, the one in the background is the man's face and the one in the foreground has human teeth and it's holding a corn. So it's all very symbolic or whatnot. And here's a, um, this is in the great hall. This is just fascinating. There's huge stone pieces in this hall and this is a lion. This is the um, Aztec calendar, which is not actually a calendar. It's more of a history. And it was made fairly recently, like it was carved in the early 1500s, just before the uh, Aztec came. And when the Aztec came, it was buried in the central Zacalo. This is what they call a chacmul. It's usually, it was, it's always somebody sitting on their back, a warrior looking to the side, holding a bowl in which offerings were put. And it, it definitely comes from several different cultures. This is an Olmec head. The Olmec were one of the earliest large Mesoamerican cultures. So, uh, so striking. I remember somebody was talking about, there was a thing at Chariot of the Gods, how the, uh, none of the Mexican cultures were, didn't develop on their own. It had to be aliens who came and told them things. And they said, look at that face. I don't see anybody like that. But the face the guy was showing in his display was, looked to me tremendously like Fernando Valenzuela, the um, great pitcher for the Dodgers. This, I actually saw some woman, uh, this is years ago on PBS and I haven't found a reference to it. She did a dance with this. This is kind of the rattlesnake goddess. And look at, if you look at the top, the head is formed with two rattlesnakes looking at each other. There's a interwoven rattlesnake belt and she has the feet of a jaguar. So this is Coatlicu. And I, I wish I could find the thing where the woman did the dance, but it was fascinating. But you see she has skulls as a necklace and very complicated um, um, graphically and symbolically. And this is the Great Hall. And uh, we have a ton of slides on this, but that's all I'm showing you. But anyway, just love that fountain. So we're, we, uh, I don't know if it's open every evening, but we're there the evening. And here's the BBVA building lit up at night and it's lit with LEDs, which are supposedly using less energy. But there's the BBVA uh, reflected in, in a building. And there, on the Passe Reforma near Chapultepec, there were a lot of huge modern buildings, expensive hotels, gyms, very, very expensive or looked that way to me. But so we were in Chapel Tepic, the, um, so we were looking at this way on the, the, the buildings. Where we're going to go soon is down to, um, we're gonna do a walk around Roma and Condesa. And you can see that says uh, Parque Me Mexico is a former racetrack, a hippodromo. You can just tell by the shape. And uh, later we're going south to Coyacan, but that's off the map. Um, this is just a street we're walking along. You can see it's a wide street. It's with um, another Cerveceria de Barrio, but we didn't go there. And this was a church that our friend suggests that we look at. We got, our friend was Gabrielle, but, and she, I never asked her if I could mention her name, but anyway, she uh, told us a church to go to and a park to go to. And so we really enjoyed it having, you know, kind of a guide of places to go. And this is a I think this is the Park de Rio de Janeiro. Some beautiful flowers. 
and uh, it's cute. I always go every place. Having been a dog owner, I always look for the uh, dog disposal bag uh, places. Uh, and this is just a house in the area. There was a, a line of them all with the same, or maybe it's the same building, but very beautiful stonework. And this is a big, uh, I think Rod told me the name of the street, but it's a big wide street with a little park in the center. And there's some statuary. This uh, little man is uh, installed above, above, uh, above the street. And she told us to go to a particular taqueria, so this is, we found it. And it's a little small place, but it really was, the food really was good, quite good. And there's some wandering mariachis. And another one she recommended was the Neveria Roxy, which was an ice creamery. And we got some ice cream there. And just, uh... and this is the Parque Mexico in the Mexico, Mexico Park that was part of that, that former racing track. And Bird or Me, this is a Rufus backed Robin. And this was part of a, um, there's a, um, what do you call it, a band shell here, but it's uh, used for soccer when it's not being used for band shell purposes. And this is all part of, this is quite a big park too, not nowhere near as big as Chapel Tepic, but big, beautiful park. And like before in the sort of more continental thing, it's uh, no grass, but a lot of hedge work. And this hedge, you look carefully how well it's clipped, is in the form of an eagle. So it's a Mexican eagle. This is the, um, another fountain. It's the uh, Plaza de Vila de Madrid. And this is a replica of a, of a fountain statue from Madrid. And it's called the, um, it's after the goddess Sibylle. And she has a, she's being pulled by two lions in a cart. And you see it's nice greenery. Now we took a, a tour bus, which is a good idea because it got us down to Coyacan. A bad idea to take it on a Friday afternoon because the traffic was so bad, it just took forever to get back. But we enjoyed, you know, being able to see things we couldn't see. But don't do it on a Friday. No. Anyway, so we got to see a lot of traffic. I mean, we didn't have, didn't have a car, so we weren't driving ourselves. The other thing when you get as high as the bus, you notice is the wiring, a lot of wiring. And they took us out on Paseo Reforma. And here was one of these statues that's being, it's called the Victory of Independence, something like that, that it was being repaired. And the, again, the uh, Diana Huntress. They're just the things that from you get from a big city, you get billboards. So this is the Witcher and, and the perfume billboard and all this stuff. This, I think we, I know at one time what it is, but I, I think it's actually um, an auditorium or performing arts auditorium. But, you know, a lot of really interesting modernist uh, sculpture. And this was a, I believe, a mall. And when on the way back, a lot of people got off at the mall, a fairly high-end mall. And we could look down and see motorcycles. Now we got to Coyacan. And like one of the things that's a draw to Coyacan, it's where uh, Frida Kahlo had her studio. And in that time, it was out of the city. Now, of course, it's, you know, it's a huge metropo metropolis, so it's grown up. So the Coyacan is like a coyote. And there's the Museo Frida Kahlo. And we got there. This was, you know, November, but there was like an hour, two hour lineup. We thought, no, don't need to do that. We'll just see what else is around here. And first we went into a um, Mercado and you see the Mercados are numbered and the, you can see in the lower right, the uh, coyote. And inside, like a lot of Mercados, it's, you know, cheek by jowls, little stalls stuffed in together. And we stopped there and had a seat, uh, a sandwich. There were a few little seats that it was a tortas uh, or what they call sandwiches, a certain type of sandwich. And that's what Rod got or one of us got. And this is, we're just walking around uh, Coyacan. Uh, first uh, by the central plaza. And again, a lot of, there's the coyote and he's got the little speech symbol like they have in the older, um, uh, say they had some like that at Teotihuacan. Anyway, and they had a little band shell. It had a manger scene in it actually. And there was a cathedral there. 
And this, there was a series of murals, which I didn't get all of, but this is, you can see that there's Lady Liberty is being rudely compromised by money, dollars. So I don't know if that means it's American, but anyway, this is, I put to get the whole um, thing. So you see there's Lady Liberty being compromised, the snake and the eagle on the cactus of Mexico. And then top, it shows CDMX, Mexico City, and it's a sardine can with all the little workers stuffed inside. And I think part of that same mural was a, a woman taking a picture of herself holding a chihuahua while her little daughter is on a leash. So that's a critique of some sort. And so we walked around Coyacan and there were little small streets cobbled. And a lot of them, it turned out, you could see that the front was a, a, a you know, there was a, the building had a front, but behind there was actually a garden. So it was quite interesting. And this is a, Frida Kahlo Park with statues of Frida and Diego Rivera. A very pleasant little park. I think it was, and especially for children possibly it had a park. And there's more of the Buenas Noches, the uh, plant we see at Christmas that I can't remember its name in English. And there we go, part of the park. And they had some uh, topiary. So this was a topiary dog it looks like to me. And uh, Frida has to deal with photographers. And after that, we went into a nice little coffee shop, had some coffee. And then we go back. And this is the part of the bus trip that got really tedious because uh, Rod wanted to see the university and this stuff, which we eventually did see. This is the Olympic Stadium. But it, it got quite cold and very long. So um, this is one of the Mercados and you see they're covering up for rain. Again, it was getting late in the season. Here's our bus driver being distracted. It took a long time to get back. And we were very fortunate that we got a seat down inside because by the end of the evening, it was getting very cold. So again, I recommend the hop on, hop off bus, but not on a Friday afternoon. It took us forever to get back. And this is again, the view from our hotel in the morning. And that's a coffee shop we went to. We didn't get breakfast at the hotel. So we went down to a little coffee shop and got coffee. They had, you know, a limited menu of, you know, a breakfast sandwich and some treats, but that was good. And we went back to Chapel Tepic Park. This is the entry. And if you look down on the ground, you'll see a lot of plaques. And there were a lot of plaques dedicated to the, the, the disappeared people. And this says, where are our children? Donde están nuestros hijos? Children, huh? Yeah, where are our children? And here we went to, there's a museum of modern art. I'm not gonna show you much art, but the one thing that was interesting, the museum of modern art uh, is in favor of um, nursing mothers in public spaces. I thought that was nice. And that's what it looks like inside, very modernist building. And they also had out, outdoors a, a um, sculpture park. This is the only picture I have, or I thought it was interesting. Then we went back to the, um, uh, botanical garden and you can see a nice uh, um, succulent garden. And here is the difference, there's a difference. Agaves is what they make mezcal. So this is the maguey mezcalero, that's what they make mezcal out of. And this is the agave azul, the blue agave that they make tequila out of. And they set them up beautifully. And this again is the, the pond. Then we went to it, it turned out another chain restaurant. This was a chain for, I forget which brand of beer, but it was very, very pleasant. It, they weren't busy and they were very happy to see us. So we had some nice beer. Rod's smiling in the next picture, but you know, we had big beer. And they were getting dressed up for the holidays. And you can see up on the right, there's a, um, a banner of Guadalupe. And this is our last day. So we're just walking around. And you can see all the buena, Buenas Noches, or Noches Buenas, I always forget which is which, and the big statue on the Paseo Reforma. And on Sundays, I think this was a Sunday, it was shut off. So people were exercising, biking, skating all over the park. And you look on the right, there's people dancing. And what it is, is I think it's some sort of jazzercise. And the ladies were up there with their sound system and everybody was doing it. And there was, again, a lot of stalls for sales. I bought some little purses for my friends. And this is really near the end, but this is one of the real typical stalls in Mexico City. I used to get, uh, it's called pulperindo, a tamarind treat in these stalls. 
And that's our last view. That is in the taxi as we're leaving. 